in a series called Spy Stories. Spy Stories. Don't you love a good spy story? I do. I used to, you know, like to watch all those, you know, Mission Impossible and stuff like that and different things. I mean, that's putting me way back. The, the first, uh, you know, what was it, 1960s or 70s, whatever that came out. Uh, not the new movies, but, you know, I've watched those too, but uh, a little bit over the top sometimes. But, um, but it's, it's fun to see people escape danger and that's what we're talking about today activating your faith in the face of danger right we live sometimes it seems in a dangerous world and we need to have faith activated when we face those dangers so that we will continue to live for God and live free from tragedy or destruction that would try to come our way. Um, Spies, the very nature of being a spy is that you go behind enemy lines and you're a spy. You're in enemy territory and you're going to uh, try to gain information that will help you, help your nation or help uh, you to overcome the enemy so that you will prevail. To find out what what they have and don't have and what's going on, things like that. And so we think that this is maybe something that's new, but, you know, this has happened since the Bible. I mean, since Moses. I mean, this is... This is... What happened and is still happening today, espionage, uh, spying, and things like that. Can you imagine yourself being in a foreign country and an enemy land and... You know that you're a spy, but you're, you know, you're trying to blend in. You're trying to not uh, let no, anyone know that you're a spy. And But you know that if you're caught, if you're found out, I mean, it could be the end for you. You could be uh, even tortured or, uh, you know, killed or, or at least imprisoned and things like that. So, uh, I don't know how people would be able to do that, but... Somehow they do. Now as you in your life begin to take new territory, you know God's called you to new territory. God's called you to expand. God's called you to grow. God's called you to uh, not just be equipped to stay where you are, but to always be uh, going further. Always to uh, expand your influence for God in your life and in the lives of others. And so it could be in every area of your life. God wants you to increase. God, the Word of God shows that when people just hide what they got and just plant it in the ground, you know, dig a hole, put your resources in the ground, your money or whatever, your treasure in the ground and just cover it up and say, you know, I've got to save it for whenever... God doesn't like that. He wants you to at least use it to gain interest, you know, he says, and, and uh, to increase. So, so I'm saying all that to say God has a plan for you. He wants you to go even beyond where the enemy has stopped you. Go behind enemy lines, so to speak, to find out where you need to be and how you are able to expand and bring victory in the things that the enemy is trying to stop you. See, the enemy does not want you to accomplish the things of God and what he has for your life. He doesn't. He's trying to stop you. He's here to still kill and destroy. He wants to, uh, he wants to cause your train to derail <laughs> and cause a disaster. But you're on the God train and you're going to go all the way. So how do we activate our faith... When we face danger, because when you go behind enemy lines, it can be dangerous. But with God, all things are possible, and we can endure. We can trust Him. So, speaking of, uh, you know, speaking of frogs, (laughs) how did that subtle transition? A frog... Goes to a fortune teller. Yeah, I know, it's pretty 
pretty out there. A, fr- a frog goes to a fortune teller. She says, the fortune teller says, a young woman will come into your life that will be very curious to know everything about you. The frog says, am I like on a dating app? How is this going to happen? It says, no, actually, you are in a biology class. <laughs> How many of you took biology when you were in high school? You had to... To work on that frog, you know. Does the smell come back to you? Does that all come back to you right now? <laughs> but uh, it's dangerous out there, people. <laughs> so many are pessimistic about the future. This frog now had reason to be pessimistic. But... Uh, you know, we've gone through COVID and all the lockdowns and all that. You know, I won't even go further on that. But uh, today, well, maybe cancel culture. People are afraid to put something out there. They don't want to be canceled. Uh, things like that. Uh, there seems to be political weaponization of law enforcement. I mean, that's what it looks like to me. There's, there's distrust. There's crime. Of course, we're dealing with all of us with inflation. That seems to be off the charts. Then, you know, all these things can cause you to have a pessimistic look for the future. But the Bible tells us that God has a great plan for our lives. God has a great future for you. These things are just obstacles. These things are just, uh, you know... Little road bumps on the course that God has set for you. Because God has promised you a new land. God has promised you land. God says the promised land is before you. Now, that's what he told the Israelites. Remember, they've come through the desert. They've God's done a great victory for them. You know, they've gone through the Red Sea. The enemy has been vanquished. You know, the waters covered the... Egyptian army and they've come out on the other side and now you know they've been baptized they've gone through the water and now they've come out and they are going um, to the promised land so I'm giving you this promised land that I promised your forefathers and so they're on their way now they get to the Jordan River so what do they do God has a plan And he says, this is the promised land. Now God has Moses to send out 12 leaders to spy out the land that he is giving to the people of God. And so these leaders come from each of the 12 tribes. They're leaders. They're people that have influence. They're people that uh, all of the tribes look up to. And so each tribe will hear what they have to say when they come back. And they'll look to, to them to lead. So God's plan is to give us land. God's plan is to give us territory. God has a promised, preferred, specific future for you. So what do we do first? We've got to gather information. That's why he's sending them out to spy out the land. He could have just said, okay, here's the land. Go get it. But no, he has a plan. First, we're going to go do some intelligence gathering. Right? We're going to create a map. Right? We're going to create a map so we know where we're going and what's in that, that area. Numbers chapter 13, verse 17. We start here. It says, Moses gave the men these instructions as he sent them out to explore the land. Verse 18. See what the land is like. And find out whether the people living there are strong or weak, few or many. See what kind of land they live in. Is it good or is it bad? Well, they should have already known it was going to be good because it's the promised land. So we need to study that which God has sent us into and to spy out the land. See, the Word of God is the map for our future. Wisdom applied to that Word of God will cause us to uh, overcome anything that will stand in our way. Because we have the map. We have God's Word. Maybe... uh, the Word of God with mentors, people, that, uh, and wisdom from maybe information they've put in books. And uh, maybe, you know, today, of course, the Internet and things like that. You can find out how to do many things. I have learned how to do many things 
that I would have not known how to do without uh, finding it online. And so there's good things that we can do about that. Um, and so we can know how, where, what to do, how to do it, how others have, have gone before. So, Because if you can do what the mentors say, if you can do what they did, then you can have what they have. Right? As God leads you in your life to expand, to receive the promised land. What is God's promised land for you? What has He called you to? What territory does He want you to take? Now we set out to find out more about it. So, let's map it out. I remember... I mean, this was, I don't know, 20 years ago maybe, one of the homes, uh, I think the second home that we had, we were going to move, and I was going to sell it myself without a realtor. So what did I do? I went to the library. This was before the internet, kind (laughs) of. Anyway, so I go there, and I find some books on how to sell the home yourself, and I read the books, and I find out how to do it. I did it. And I was able to save some money at that time. I don't recommend that for everybody. I mean, I mean, if God's calling you to do that, then uh, He will show you how to do it. But so I sold it myself and uh, overcame the obstacles and things that came my way. All it takes is one buyer. It just takes one. Many came and went, but all it took was one. So so we map it out. We say, how do we get there? What are the steps? What's the course that we need to take? What's in that area that I need to be aware of? Because this is what God's called me to receive. And I'm going to overcome and receive the inheritance. Receive that destined opportunity, the opportunity that God has given me. So then next we define the obstacles. Define the obstacles. It says in Numbers 13, 19, and 20. It says, do their towns have walls? Or are they unprotected like open camps? Is the soil fertile or poor? Are there many trees? Do your best to come back, to bring back samples of the crops you see. They are finding out what's there and all the obstacles. I mean, uh, like my daughter, she's a, a registered dietitian. When she was in college studying to become a dietitian, They knew which classes were going to be a challenge. Even doctors, dietitians, they know that the hardest class is going to be organic chemistry. And so she was prepared for that, though. She knew in advance. She had spied out the land. They already told them what to prepare for. And then when it got hard, when it got tough, and maybe you didn't make that A that you're used to making or whatever it is, She was able to realize, you know what, everybody is struggling with this. All the people that have come before me have struggled with this. This is just what I know to face. And so she had faith to face to the end. And, of course, she was able to pass organic chemistry. Maybe you're going to go into the military. Well, you already know that basic training is going to be there. You're going to have to go through this to get to the promised land of being in the armed forces or whatever. You're going to have to do basic training. That's just part of it. Parents. <laughs> you know that parenting can be a great challenge. And sometimes if you've got kids under five or even teenagers, uh, it's good to talk to other parents to spy out the land, to find out what they went through, to find out, get some, gain some resources and knowledge to map out maybe a course you can take so that you can overcome the obstacles of parenting. So knowing that what the obstacles are ahead of time helps you not to freak out <laughs> and to keep yourself in faith with God's course for you. Now, we won't always be able to avoid danger unless we know what the obstacles are. Then we can make plans and we can map it out and go the right course and we can continue our trust in God and that He will direct us to the outcome that He has destined for us to receive. This was the Israelites' destiny. This was their land. This was the promised land of God. What were they going to do? Well, they sent out the 12 spies. Now, we're going to describe also then the payoff. What is the payoff? Numbers 13, 23. 
When they came to the valley of Eshcol, they cut down a branch with a single cluster of grapes, so large that it took two of them to carry it on a pole between them. They also brought back samples of the pomegranates and figs. So they come back. They said, this is the payoff. This is the samples of what's in this promise. It truly is the land flowing with milk and honey. This is God's blessed land for us. See, because a lot of times we don't know what the payoff will be. We'll say, well, why bother? Why do we go through all this? Because God has a destiny and a place for you he, to expand, to have a promised land. But if we don't know what the payoff will be, then sometimes we don't want to go to the end. In the end, it will be worth it. So the spy must envision the day. He's behind enemy land, land, lines and he is gathering information that one day he'll get through this. He'll bring back what's, what's needed for victory. And one day maybe he'll stand before the President of the United States to receive an award for his heroism. But of course, they won't make it known because it's secret. Sometimes the things you do are secret, only known to God. The things that you endure and you overcome. But God is the one who rewards. God is the one who sees. And your faith will bring forth the payoff that He has for you. So, as you see yourself, you see your future. As you see yourself, you see your future. Because what did the spies do when they came back? How did they see themselves in the situation after after mapping it out, after describing or defining the obstacles and describing the payoff? Numbers 13, 25, and 27. It says, after exploring the land for 40 days, the men returned. So 40 days. I mean, it wasn't just a, you know, going to stay there a couple nights you know, at the local hotel. I mean, no, they... They were there for 40, 40 days. I mean, quite, a, quite a, a spy gathering trip for 12 spies. And in verse 27, this was their report to Moses. We entered the land you sent us to explore. And it is indeed a bountiful country, a land flowing with milk and honey. Here is the kind of fruit it produces. So, they said indeed, God's word is true. God's promise is true. Right? So, Are they going to continue to trust God? Are they going to go in and take that? They found out, yes, God's promises are true. It has been seen. Now, a lot of times in our lives, what we we believe about ourselves and how we are in the circumstances of our advancing ourselves in God's plan, if you can't see the world sometimes in in a positive way, you will not have a positive outcome or a positive life. If you're fearful and worried, then you will always find things to be fearful and worried about. It's always available, right? Uh, It's constantly coming at you. You find evidence for what you believe, whether good or bad. You find evidence for what you believe, either good or bad. They found good evidence. They found the things that God said, but they're going to share more. Right? You know, there's a thing that, you know, talked about confirmation bias. Confirmation bias. Whatever you're looking for, you will find confirmation of that. If you look hard enough and long enough. So, I don't know. They must have had some kind of confirmation bias because we're going to see what's going to happen here. But remember, we are believers. What are you going to choose to believe? Are you going to believe God? Are you going to believe His promised land, the promises of God He has for you? Are you going to choose to believe your life will be better, that God has a good plan for you? So your beliefs are free, but choosing the wrong ones can cost you. Choosing to believe the wrong direction that God says, or to see the obstacles... As too great. Well, God did say these things were going to be there. And yeah, I can see that. But, see, God has a plan to prosper you. He, to give you a hope and a future. Jeremiah 29, 11. 
That is true. That is rock solid for you. But we have to choose to believe in the great future he has for you. It is waiting for you to take it. See, and that's what the Israelites had to do. They had to take and possess with much effort the promises of God. A lot of times we say, well, God, you promised it. So, no, but we have to do our part, right? Why did he have to send out the 12 spies? Because they had to plan the map of what they were going to do and what was there. God expected them to do their part, to take their uh, to take the battle. And God would help them have the victory in the battle that they would face. But if there's obstacles in our way, sometimes these things can stop us unless we have the vision of seeing it to the end. Maybe you're saying, well, you know, I just work at this restaurant. I'm just flipping burgers right now. Well, what is your vision? Maybe, I mean, hey, if you want to flip burgers the rest of your life, that's fine. I mean, nothing wrong with that. But maybe you say, you know what, I believe God has more for me. I believe he wants me to manage this place. I'm not just going to just do this. I'm going to do more. Maybe it's he's going to say, well, and then I'm going to buy this franchise. I'm going to. I'm going to own this store. See, do you see yourself succeeding or failing? Or you just say, well, you know, that's too great an obstacle. I mean, you know, that's just not going to happen. And I, this is just where I'm going to be for the rest of my life. And so what is your vision? Are you, are you being treated badly? Do people treat you in a bad way in a different circumstance? Well, sometimes we have to teach people how to treat us. What is the vision of yourself? Well, I deserve to be treated this way. Because of this or that. Because the environment, maybe you grew up in the things people said. And so uh, you allow people to do that. But you're going to have sh- to show people, no, I don't, I'm not treated that way. Because I'm valuable and precious. I'm God's chosen possession. He's, I'm the apple of his eye. He's given me gifts and talents. He's got a plan for me. And so you will be able to... With that value and how you see yourself. As you see yourself, you see your future. Your future will become that which God has planned for you and given you the vision in your life. Numbers 13, 28 and 29 says this. So remember the previous verse. Yeah, this is a land flowing with milk and honey. This is awesome. This is what God has said. Verse verse 28 says, but... (laughs) Yeah, 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 but. Yeah, that's true, yeah, this is awesome, but the people living there are powerful and their towns are large and fortified. We even saw giants there. The descendants of Anak. And then verse 29. The Amalekites, the Hittites, Jebusites, Amorites, Canaanites, and the Termites. Oh, no. All the ites. All the ites are in the land. We're afraid of all these ites. There's so many ites that we just don't know what to do. There's giants in the land. Now, look, think about this. All 12 spies saw the same things. But how did they see themselves with what they had seen there? So they saw the same land, but some focus and believe the worst. Your wrong belief will hold you back from God's plan for you. Your wrong belief. Your wrong belief will hold you back from what God's planned for you. Instead, believe God has given it to you. That's what they had to believe. He said this would happen and this would happen. Hey, and remember how God led them out of Egypt, out of slavery. But so quickly they've forgotten. But God has given it to you, but you have to take it. You have to receive it. You have to walk out the steps. You have to to map it out. You have to define the obstacles. You have to describe the payoff. You have to, with faith, keep marching forward. But your wrong beliefs will hold you back from God's plan. Instead, believe God has given it to you. Believe the rest of your life is the best, not the worst. The rest of your life is the best. The best is yet to come. Victory is on its way. It takes just as much faith to believe that as it takes to believe that 
this is it. That's the end. I'm not going any further. This is all it's going to be. You know, just sit here and focus on all the obstacles. But we focus not on the obstacles. We focus not on the giants. They were focusing on the giants. Instead, they didn't focus on what they needed to focus on, the opportunity, on the land of promise. Instead, the obstacles said, well, I don't know. See, if you don't choose God's plan for your life, life will choose its plan for you. I think you should write that one down. If you don't choose God's plan for your life, then life will choose its plan for you. Let's choose God's plan. Let's don't let life, the world, choose a plan for us. Numbers 13, verse 30 through 33, and it says, But Caleb tried to quiet the people as they stood before Moses. So all the people are there. The twelve spies are there. These are leaders to their tribes. Now Caleb, one of the leaders, one of the spies, he says, he's trying to shush everybody. Because they're all murmuring now. Oh, there's giants in the land. Oh, oh. There's ites in the land. But he says this, let's go at once to take the land. Let's go at once to take the land, he said. We can certainly conquer it. Verse 31, but the other men disagreed. We can't go up up against them. They are stronger than we are. So they spread this bad report. The land will devour anyone who goes to live there. Well, that's just an absurd statement, isn't it? The land will devour anyone who goes to live live there. Verse 33, we even saw giants there. Next to them, we felt like grasshoppers and that's what they thought too they even are mind readers they know what these other people are thinking they look like we're grasshoppers in our sights and that's what they were thinking (laughs) you ever done that it's come to a situation an obstacle difficulty well they're thinking this about me so you know you've already defeated yourself You don't even know what they're thinking. They might be scared of you. (laughs) They might be afraid that you're going to take their job. (laughs) Who knows what. The, The ten spies said, we felt and thought. We felt and thought. We felt and thought. Are you led by your feelings? Which produce the wrong thoughts and the wrong beliefs? Many people are. But not believers. No, not believers in Christ, not followers of Jesus, because He is our God. We put our trust in Him. But these ten ten spies said, we felt and thought. This is called the grasshopper complex. When you feel and think. Feel, we go by our feelings. Oh, they're massive, they're awesome, they're big. There's no way we can win. See, if you let your feelings drive your thoughts, you will do the wrong thing. Instead, believers take truth. See, what are we? We're led by the Spirit and we're led by truth. We're led by the Word of God. We think on that and then we feel. We let feelings follow. And they will conform to the truth of the Word of God. Maybe not immediately, but that's why there's faith. We keep standing on the truth and the promise of God. This is the promised land for us. So two of the t- twelve spies said, Yes, we can take it. We can go up. Let's go right now. What are we waiting for? Let's go. Let's take the land. It's so awesome. We will overcome the obstacles. But instead, all the people, they listened to the naysayers. They listened to the unbelievers. Numbers 14, 24, 25, it says, But my servant Caleb... This is God saying, but my servant Caleb has a different attitude than the others have. See, a different way of thinking, a different way of conforming to that which God has presented. A different attitude than the others have. He has remained loyal to me, so I will bring him into the land he explored. His descendants will possess their full share of that land. Verse 25, now turn around. And don't go on toward the land where the Amalekites and Canaanites live. 
Tomorrow you must set out for the wilderness in the direction of the Red Sea. Their feelings of being grasshoppers <laughs> made them make the wrong decision. They did not trust God and God says, turn around. You know what? They had to go around that wilderness for 40 years until everybody died except for Caleb and Joshua. The two believers. Two people of faith. Because they believed God. They were ready to go in and take the land. But everybody else, they had to die out till a new generation come. They had... They had to get the old ways of Egypt and slavery to die out of them. But let's don't do that. Let's don't keep going around out in the wilderness. Let's don't wait till we die. Let's take hold of the promised land. We, we don't, we're not turning around. We're going to go forward. We're going to be like Caleb and Joshua. We're going to say, let's go at once to take the land and we can certainly conquer it. So, where they finished, Caleb and Joshua, their kids were able to start. Of course, they were grown up adults by the time they got there. Let your kids see what God can do through you. Let the following generation know that they can rise up to a greater level than where they are today. And that you've done that with your life. Take what will be their normal to a higher level. You have seen the promised land. You have seen the promises of God. You have seen also the obstacles that stand in your way. Now we will help others also to trust and believe that we can overcome and take the land that God has presented as ours. Take possession of it by faith and by mapping it out. By seeing what the obstacles are. Overcoming through trust and faith. In God. And let God cause you to see yourself as He sees you. Will you do that? Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you that the rewards await us, the rewards of trust and faith in you. You said that if we would believe, we would receive. Believe and receive that which God has said. And Lord, we choose to do that. And that victory is ours. There may be obstacles. There may be a fight. There may be a battle. But we will stand firm because the promised land has been set for us. We will possess it. We will go up and possess it. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that every obstacle will fall. Every giant will lay down. Every victory will be yours because we will give you the praise. Thank you, Lord, you go before us and you're our rear guard. That you're with us, the angels of God and camp round about us. That no calamity will come our way because you're with us. Our God is great. And he has his children to receive the possession that he is freely pouring out. Presented to us. We see it with eyes of faith. We see ourselves as in the army of the Lord. That we are triumphant. We see this in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful rest of the day. There's prayer.